Hello, world, and welcome to the Bitcoin Show, episode two. <laughs> I'm Bruce Wagner. And joining Manny me, Mena. Manny Mena. and Ed Gell. Ed Gell. Today, we're going to talk with uh, Jared Kenna of a new venture. This is earth-shattering Bitcoin world news um, called TradeHill.com. TradeHill.com is uh, the newest, best exchange site for instant Bitcoin purchases. And so joining us live via Skype is Jared Kenna. Hello, Jared. Hello. <laughs> Where are you, Jared? I am in Chile. I am in Villa del Mar, Chile. Is it chilly in Chile right now? Unfortunately, it's hot and I'm wearing a suit today. <laughs> <laughs> so are we. So I want to I, I want to take a break and just mention today's episode is brought to you by our three sponsors, BitcoinBonus.com, where you're rewarded with bitcoins for shopping online, and AmbivertCreative.com. Ambivert Creative will create your identity in print, web, and online. Uh, and TradeHill.com, which is obviously who we're interviewing today. TradeHill.com is the uh, the new Bitcoin exchange for instant Bitcoin purchases. So yeah. back to you, Jared. So uh, what's happening? Tell us this, this story. Well, we're going live right now. Um, we're doing a few things differently. One, uh, we're trying to make it a lot easier to buy Bitcoins, uh, a lot simpler and a lot faster, and obviously cheaper. Um, so we're trying to offer as many varieties of uh, deposit and withdrawal methods as possible, and currencies. Um, Obviously, I'm in Chile, so Chilean peso was a big priority. Um, currently, we're offering the U.S. dollar, Peruvian soles, Chilean peso, um, euros, Australian dollars. Brazil's coming really soon. Um, we just confirmed India and Israel. So we're going to have the Israeli shekel and the Indian rupee as well. It sounds like Bitcoin is, uh, it really is an, a world currency. <laughs> yes. Coming of age. You're an American guy, right? That's correct. I'm a U.S. citizen. Let's start with that. How did you end up in Chile? <laughs> I, uh, I met a Chilean girl and... Uh, um, of course. <laughs> we're doing good. Yeah, yeah. We <laughs> talked about this before. You laughed at me a little bit. But uh, oh, we're still together. No, I'm sorry. We're still together. We're doing great. So. <laughs> So yeah, we uh, we went on a date or two, and then um, she moved back to Chile, and I pretty much had to decide if I wanted to see her again. I had to fly down, so I flew down, and uh, oh, love to see Chile. <laughs> the great. rest is history. So now, how long ago did you guys? First of all, who is involved in this new venture? Who, who? How did you get together, and when did you come up with this idea? Well, I've been following Bitcoin for a while. Um, Unfortunately, I didn't put enough money in when it was 20 cents, but uh, did, right? I've been following it since about that point, which was probably six months ago or so. Um, I really like the idea. Like, I like it from an economic perspective. I like it from a perspective and everything. And I really wanted it to succeed. And I wasn't really optimistic in the beginning. Uh, I mean, I was optimistic, but part of me said, you know, this is too much. Uh, people won't understand it. Uh, it's a little bit too much. To to grasp, mm -hmm. and then I saw the how hard the community was working, and uh, you know as well, this is a real grassroots um, effort. And then I thought, you know, hey, how can I get a part of this? How can I make some money? And uh, I looked at what's lacking. Um, MT Docs, they do a great job. I'm not going to bash MT Docs at all. Uh, I like Tux; he's a great guy, and uh, they've done a really good job. But there's a lot of things that we could be doing differently. Mm -hmm. um, also, MT Docs is a single point of failure for Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes MT Docs, it wouldn't destroy Bitcoin, but it would be a major blow. Yeah. The beauty of Bitcoin is it's so distributed that uh, you shouldn't have any single point of failure. There needs to be exchange. And the same with Trade Hill. I mean, as, le as much as I would love all the Bitcoin volume to go through us, uh, it's not a good idea. You know, yeah. it needs to be distributed. So, and yeah. I think everyone in Bitcoin agrees. Yeah, definitely. I think everybody agrees that, yeah, the more, the, the, le the, the less uh, chance of a single point of failure, the better all the, w all the way around for, all, for the whole world, for all, mm -hmm. all of Bitcoin. So, 
Exactly. Otherwise, yeah, it's like we <laughs> rely on the Fed. So what? What did? Um, so okay. So you're are you a developer or what's your background? What do you do in other, before well, this? I, I, I'm into computers. I, I grew up. I grew up uh, screwing up computers, building them, uh, playing video games, and all that stuff. So um, yeah, I can develop a little bit, but I've got some guys that are professional developers, and uh, mm-hmm. this isn't something that you want to take lightly. So I called up a few friends. Um, We've got one guy who was a uh, lead software developer for uh, SpaceX, which if you're familiar, uh, SpaceX, you know, I figure if the guy can uh, write a program to put a rocket into space, <laughs> he's got to work for us. So I uh, called him up <laughs> and uh, called another friend who's um, actually the one that's going to be on the Spanish Bitcoin show. His name's Francisco Tagnino. Mm-hmm. And um, he worked for one of the largest uh, investors in the world. Uh, for confidentiality reasons, I don't think he's allowed to mention it. Mm-hmm. If he is, he'll probably say that on the Spanish big fund that I don't know <coughs> about him. Mm-hmm. Um, he also worked for one of the largest uh, U.S. retail banks in uh, business analytics. And uh, basically doing this, uh, moving money around, recording where it goes, and all that stuff. So how many of you so, guys are involved? Um, there's the three of us, we're the core, but we brought in some other people mm-hmm. as well. Um, we've got... Uh, as much as the Bitcoin community might cringe at this, we've got some uh, Wall Street folks. We've got some guys that do uh, derivatives, quantitative finance, that type of thing. Uh-huh. None of that's implemented yet, but that's coming soon. Deri- yeah. Derivatives, quantitative financing? So, like options and uh, I don't even Margin, understand. Margin yeah. trading? or I barely options. understand what that is. How would those models fit into Bitcoin? Because Bitcoin doesn't necessarily match anything that's out there now. Exactly, exactly. And and the biggest difference is you can't just make it. You know, <coughs> all or any other fiat currency. The central bank decides they want to print, you know, 100 billion, they go ahead and do it. But with Bitcoin, you can't do that. You can't do that. So, like, so how would that work? I don't, I don't quite get it. So if I want to, like, what is a margin is when I'm borrowing money to buy Bitcoin? Is that basically right. what it is? I knew what I borrow it from. Is it? Well, in this case, you'd be borrowing it from us if we're the ones offering it. But mm-hmm. it gets complicated. It can get swapped yeah. around and everything. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, there's always going to be a risk for someone. Yeah. We can just create more. So if you have to be very careful with it. Mm-hmm. And the people we're bringing in, I've been doing this personally for a long time, mm-hmm. um, directly responsible for the collapse of the United States. <laughs> um, I don't want to associate that with them. I don't know if these are good references or not. But, uh, they're, they're professional guys who have been doing this for a long time. They have all the degrees, the qualifications, uh, the regulations. Cool. So, which is another big thing with Bitcoin. It's lacking regulation. Yeah. There's a lot of areas and there's a lot of ambiguities. Right. So we want to bring some regulations to this. Mm-hmm. Um, I think when it remains unregulated, there's going to be rumors and misconception and everything else. Um, because it's a really powerful currency. It's not like any other currency. Mm-hmm. You know, you can move the equivalent of a truck full of cash <laughs> to Brazil yeah. in 20 minutes. Yeah. And so a lot of people don't understand how. Yeah. When you say regulation, we want to bring regulation to it. You mean what kind of? You mean regulation not in the sense of a government regulation? You mean just a more um, a, a standard, secure platform? Right, right. I mean, we definitely want to bring a lot of information. Mm-hmm. I think that's the biggest thing that's lacking. A lot of people just don't understand what it is exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the other thing is the reason I'm for the leg- uh, I'm sorry, the regulation and legislation of it is. Mm-hmm. If we can clarify and we can put it in a positive light mm-hmm. before it gets vilified and looked at as exclusively a tool for money laundering or anything like that, mm-hmm. um, get, you know, stay one step ahead of them. You know, right, get right. some good laws before they put out the bad laws that you know label yeah. it as yeah. illegalized. And legislation, you, you're talking about U.S. Uh, like laws. Exactly, exactly. Um, 
they're going to make some laws. The Senate's already talking about it. Um, I haven't had a lot of time to research it, but uh, Bruce, you saw the article. Uh, Senator uh, Schumer and, and uh, there were two senators, both Democrats. I forgot their names. Did, did, did you see it? I, I, I didn't read too much into it, but there's yeah. two senators. A piece of Silk Road, which is, yeah. if anybody hasn't heard of it, it's basically a board where people get together and contraband anything that would be considered illegal is usually created uh, through mm -hmm. there. And yeah. um, just like cash, you can do the same thing with Bitcoin, yeah. and now they're targeting Bitcoin specifically yeah. because it facilitates it. Well, yeah, it's a kind of a combination of the media's tendency to love hysteria and, uh, of course, the and government having an opportunity now to pin the dirt on, on this new thing that they don't like. I mean, I don't know how much of that's going on, but for mm -hmm. sure the media loves to talk about the heroin store where you can buy you know, guns and arms and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but to, to attach it to Bitcoin, I think <coughs> it's actually it's our responsibility as responsible Bitcoin communities. Obviously, cash is used in crime, and we don't outlaw cash. Absolutely. Cars are used as getaway cars, and we don't outlaw cars. It's just absurd, you know, so we have to make sure that the public is educated by us before they get too tainted and, and they start calling it, you know, uh, Silk Road money. You know, mm -hmm. we, we want to make sure that the, the word gets out that, no, that's not what it is. Right. Exactly. exactly. And I think that it's, there's ambiguity there with the anonymity. People think that it's completely anonymous when yeah. in yeah. reality it's not completely it's about I, I say it's it's as anonymous as cash in some ways it, it can be as anonymous as cash I mean it's a you know you, you can get into the technical aspects of it you know to the end but um, it's basically like pseudonym anonymous you know it's yeah. it's not really anonymous you can forensically track it back the obviously just like cash there are you know there are ways to launder Bitcoin the same ways like I mean not same ways but similar to the ways you can launder cash but it's it's not completely anonymous but it's as anonymous as email if not more <laughs> and no, it's not that anonymous it, if you want to use it um, if you want to keep better records with it you can yeah I mean if you have a bar for example and you deal mostly in cash, the government's not going to be able to track it at all. I mean, they're going to estimate and everything. Yeah. But if you dealt in Bitcoin, they could say, okay, this is your Bitcoin address. Everyone pays you here. Let me view the records. And they, yeah. know, and they would know how much you made down to the penny. Yeah, but Obviously, there's ways around that too. But I was going to say, to, yeah. To track it. I've already heard it proposed by a lot of, you know, by developers that are working on point of sale systems where the uh, they literally have a stack like a, like a notepad where a tear off QR code so that every customer gets a different QR code <laughs> like they literally scan it send the Bitcoin to that address tear it off and throw it in the wastebasket so they're the whole entire stack you'd have 5,000 addresses and they are one use throw away you know tear off the pad scan the next one and every time a customer comes through they tear off the pad so there are a lot of ways, obviously you could do that electronically too with a display, but there are a lot of ways to make every single uh, transaction unique and you can, you can sort of anonymize it, I mean as much or as little as you need for your purposes. How would that work for a regulation though? Because if you're tracking how many Bitcoins are being used, you also need to know the value against the US dollar at that specific time. Since it's so volatile right now, you know, that must be a huge headache. For you yeah, can you imagine? <laughs> You'll be taxed on the uh, tax on the purchase uh, value at the time you purchased it, or a year later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the way Bitcoin is going, man, that that Starbucks is going to cost you. <laughs> you made five dollars profit. You're going to pay a million dollars in pro you know, tax. Yeah. Exactly. Wasn't it the uh, ten thousand Bitcoin pizza? Is that correct? Yeah. A, yeah. <laughs> Remember that? That was the very first Whoa. transaction or something. How much is that today? Uh, do the math. Uh, Two hundred thousand dollar pizza. Mm -hmm. Better been good. I think that's uh, around $30,000 for that pizza, or even more. Speaking of, I, I got to say this, uh, speaking of a sidebar about uh, like nostalgia, because we're already talking about the history of Bitcoin. <laughs> I was telling Ed, we bought these, uh, you know, the bit bills, have you seen those? Uh, I bought some because I thought that uh, it would be really good, well, I want to be the first kid on the block to have one first, but also I thought, you know, for my totally can barely work on my
on there anymore. I and I know we ordered some, so that could be why our order's delayed. But anyway, I was thinking if they don't, if they discontinue those, because they'd be like, what is that? Like it's a $5,000 bill now. You know, like one card, it's a lot of money. So I was, I was telling Ed, I'll bet you anything, someday this, this card will have numismatic value. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. way back when they made a 200 Bitcoin card, you know, because mm -hmm. by then, who knows it'll, what it'll yeah. be worth. It'll be like a million dollar bill. Definitely. Can you imagine numismatic Bitcoin? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I just, speaking I of I security, uh, what are you guys doing for as far as like securing the Bitcoins that you're transacting and exchanging? <laughs> I mean, everything's, everything's packed up in multiple locations and encrypted. We're being very careful. That's, you know, you've got a really good point. Um, everything changes with Bitcoin. You know, I think in the future you might have people robbing data centers like you used to rob banks. Yeah. I mean, wow. You know, you, know you, could, you could steal someone's computer that has 10,000 Bitcoins on it, which is what, $3 million? No, yeah. Sorry, $300. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, that's three million. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> we can't think without a calculator. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> anyways, you could you could smash somebody's laptop and it might have, you know, thirty thousand dollars worth of bitcoins on it. And uh, you wouldn't know. Or, you know, somebody might break into a data center where the bitcoins are being stored, mm -hmm. steal a steal a server, or just hack in, you know. I think that's gonna be yeah, there, I think there's gonna be a whole new breed of viruses that are designed just to steal your wallet. I mean, I just I haven't heard any reports of it yet, but you just know that's coming. Did you hear oh, the? Yeah. Th did you see the thread uh, c yesterday or the day before in the forum about this poor guy? He he was a technologist. Oh, yeah. He knew what he was doing, but maybe he was too tired or something. But he he absolutely missed a step, or he actually he misinterpreted the way the technical way the Bitcoin did client works. The Bitcoin client open. Uh, certain things aren't going to be logged into the wallet, mm -hmm. and uh, that's where the discrepancy. That's what happened. You have to close it this way, just like finalize yeah. the file, whatever has to do with the procedures. So the story, did you? Hear, I don't know if you heard this, Jared. That this guy, he he created a, a Bitcoin wallet, and then he backed it up, and then he installed the app again, and created another one. He called one savings, one checking. Then he he backed it up, and then he oh, encrypted it, and intercrypted all this stuff, and then he, he did a secure wipe of the file and accidentally lost, it was about the equivalent, well, two yeah, days yeah. ago, it was like $145,000. Oh my, I wanted to cry, I don't even know the guy. I wanted to yeah. just, oh my yeah, God. Yeah, he wrote that, on like, there, he's ready heart. to jump off the window or something <laughs> out the oh, window. Oh, you know, that's, that, I, it's funny, but it's not. That's probably gonna happen, you know, somebody, because it's a, people, you know, they, we got to wrap our mind around the idea that it's, an, it's not an email. It's not a, a spreadsheet, you know? It's real money, and it could be any and amount. It could absolutely be your whole data. family's generations of life savings or something. Or if a hard drive fails or something like that. Hard drives fail. And most people really have no clue about how to do it, and this guy did know how to do it. It was a misinterpretation of how the client works, which obviously highlights the need for um, new generation of clients that have the wallet.dat file you know, encrypted from the start, encrypted and backed up, and all the much more sophisticated ways to back it up and secure it. Right. The, the first generation, you know, is really, the, this whole thing is an experiment that just happened to succeed yeah. and go live, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Discussing that now, that uh, any Trojans or any viruses that would attack a wallet file would pretty much be moved. Board loggers, that there's nothing. What can protect from that? You know, yeah. you're really there's actually a way to protect against software key logging, but not hardware key logging. Mm. Hmm. And what is Trade Hill doing for that? Like, as <laughs> far as uh, you know, keyboard obviously, logging. yeah, <laughs> hardware keyboard logging. What are you doing about that? <laughs> I mean, we've got machines that are completely isolated, and uh, you know, we're not downloading any. Uh, Anything that could uh, cause any problems, you know. I mean, if, if I've got if I've got a computer with fifty thousand dollars on it, I can definitely afford another computer to go browse on the internet with and just yeah. fix that one by itself. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So definitely, definitely, that's a big step, mm -hmm. and um, just encryption. 
Mm-hmm. Isolation, yeah. standard, you know, a lot of backups. Right. Um, and how about? Uh, yeah, we've actually we've actually got a guy that specializes in that kind of thing. Who mm-hmm. can probably give you better details. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, uh, you probably wouldn't want to just because. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Point, you, know? you can't right. expose the secrets. And how about but like? I think, uh, I think it's what you were talking about with the whole whole security thing is huge because one of my biggest fears for Bitcoin is people that have no idea how it works. And no idea that if they just get their wallet fileable and it's stolen, they lose everything. Um, they won't take proper care. And then when it does happen, they'll say, oh, Bitcoin sucks, it stole my money. Absolutely. Whereas, you know, you leave the wallet sitting around on the, uh, mm-hmm. you know, when you go to the bathroom and you come back and the money's gone, you don't go, oh, you know. Yeah, you leave your wallet on the seat and it, with a con- t- convertible top down. What do you expect? It, it, people, it's a new thing, though. People are not used to yeah, it. Yeah, they just it, don't it know. It actually happens now with credit card fraud. You know, those people, they go online and then they order something and then they're forever deterred from ever ordering online. You know, it's because they just didn't follow secure computing mm, practices. Right, so right, right. It's not their fault. They're just ignorant to the fact. That's yeah. right, yeah. Except it's a, a thousand, exponentially more dangerous because it's not credit cards. It's yeah. not reversible. That's the uh, the thing about Bitcoin that it's just absolutely cash, and it's once gone, it's gone. I mean, it's it's a whole different thing. It's it's just like uh, it's like the internet itself. Somebody said, you know, so it's really the most powerful new technology since the invention of the internet itself. I really believe I that so. disruptive technology. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I wanted to ask also, uh, Jared, about like uh, what have you guys done to protect your site from DNS attacks? Because that. Uh, DDoS. 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 Denial, distributed denial of service. DDoS, yeah. So once again, security denial of service at denial. But yeah. um, we've done a lot of testing. Uh, uh, spoken with several different DPSs, and we select one that uh, is more immune to that. It, uh, we paid some guys to run the test and, uh, and then did our own panel testing, and it's looking pretty good on the DDoS. Okay, another so question. Also, just the biggest thing is uh, stay vigilant, you know, be on top of it. Constantly test anything. Uh, I mean, we have other machines for development, you know, before anything's released. Um, and basically, just don't put it out there if we're not confident. Uh, like you said, this is something we take very seriously. So, you're capable of doing thousands of transactions at a time or uh, with this kind of uh, system that you have set up? Yeah, I mean, and, it, and we can scale it up. Uh, um, if we're getting a lot of volume, it should be. We've already, actually, I think we've already seen uh, over 10,000 at per end just start doing this. Um, we we can scale it up really easily. I can just uh, speak with them and just crank it up. Cool. Right. And the, is it designed like to store your Bitcoins there? Or it's really more like an exchange where you, I go there to exchange and then I store them somewhere else? Have you? Have you done well, anything? I mean, like that? we don't really have a problem if you store them there, but that's not the intent. I would say store them there so that you can use them, so you can trade if you want to do day trading or you know anything like that. Um, but obviously, what we have the higher risk, you know, in case something goes wrong. Um, it just kind of depends on how confident you are, you know, in yourself. Mostly, you know, I mean, I, I used to keep a fair amount of empty stocks, and I was. Uh, I said, you know, hey, they're probably out there don't them until I understand how the system works better when it was new. Now I understand the system better. Uh, I know how to back it up. I know how to encrypt it. I know how to do all this stuff. So now I'm confident enough to keep it with in my own computer and my own back. I want to. I've got a million more questions. I know we all do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I want to. We got. I want to take just a break really quick to thank again our uh, sponsors who are bringing this show to you today. Yes, thank um, you. Bitcoin Bonus is uh, a site. It's called BitcoinBonus.com. Have you heard of that, Jared? Yeah, I have, actually. Yeah. And I, I, you know, they, they uh, signed up after our first episode and said, we, we want to sponsor the Bitcoin show in English and Spanish. We're all about Bitcoin, obviously. Um, and, but then the next day, I got an email from somebody, a completely different random person who was telling me about this thing because he loves it. He um, Bitcoinbonus.com is the site. You go there and you, any shopping you're going to do online, whether you're shopping for web hosting or uh, purchases of any kind, it's got like hundreds and hundreds of links. And you, all you do is use their affiliate link and make your purchase that you're going to make anyway. And you get rewarded with, bon- with Bitcoin. And this, pr- this particular guy was uh, like a website designer. And so he would sign up for hosting accounts like several times a week. 
And every time he'd sign up for a hosting account, he got 50 Bitcoin. And he's like thrilled. He's like, this is the best thing he's ever seen. Forget the Bitcoin faucet. This is like really the Bitcoin fire hydrant. The real. So yeah, he loves it. Every time, every time you buy something, whether it's whatever, you know, I mean, all the different shopping sites Dr. Frugal will talk about. Yeah. <laughs> how to save money. And big it's name stores too. It's not just little all of stores. Them. Yeah. And hosting, probably the things that you're buying anyway. anyway yeah, exactly. You just go there. Just don't forget right before you buy it. Oh. Go there and. Uh, cash back, but Bitcoin. Exactly, it's Bitcoin back. Better than coupons for sure. <laughs> yeah, what could be better? Cash back. So mm -hmm. um, anyway, check it out, so bitcoinbonus.com. Bitcoin bonus. And uh, Daryl's awesome. He's the guy who uh, started, we, well, we had the world's first meetup at meetup.com uh, here in New York, but he started one right after that, the next weekend in D.C., and uh, he's an awesome guy. So uh, he's, he's doing really well with that, and we're really happy. So um, anytime you're shopping online, go to bitcoinbonus.com. Then also we want to thank um, Ambivert Creative, and I'm going to spell it. It's A-M-B-I-V-E-R-T creative.com, ambivertcreative.com. And what this, what this outfit does is they, they say, we design your identity in web, print, and uh, logos, like your logo, your entire website, images, stationery, everything from beginning yeah. to end. So they, they pull it all together with a real, uh, you know, a corporate identity so that you look really professional to have a corporate image, yeah. you know. From bottom to top, I mean, if you go to their webpage, you'll see some of the examples of what they're doing and it's very slick, modern, mm -hmm. very, very high tech. Good way to it's great. Yourself. Exactly, yeah, and that's gonna be, <laughs> we have a, a, a show called Build a Brand too, which is exactly about uh, online marketing and promotion and things like that. But it's very, very important, everybody knows, you have to have a, a really, you know, sleek professional uh, you know, corporate image that looks like, you know, <laughs> it doesn't look like you just made it yourself, homemade, something that looks slick. So they're, they're really pros. And, you know, if you're starting a business, you don't have time usually to do all that yourself or maybe not the skills, you know, you, they just Or the let, creativity. Exactly. Just give it to them and they, they, may, they do really, really good work. So they'll, they'll do everything for, our, like I said, your, your uh, logos, your stationery, your print, your brochures, your website, everything. They'll Product make it design, everything. Colors, everything, make it really, uh, yeah, that's right, they do labeling, like there were, there were some product prototypes where they did labeling for uh, beverages. And I different mean, forms of bottles for these beverages. It's, you gotta see it, it's great. And they accept Bitcoin, of course. They're a Bitcoin merchant, so uh, we definitely wanna support them because they're supporting the Bitcoin community as well. Absolutely. So it's Ambivert Creative, A-M-B-I-V-E-R-T creative.com. And finally, last but not least, tradehill.com, instant Bitcoin exchange. Obviously we're interviewing uh, Jared. You can do your own commercial. Uh, but uh, Trade Hill, by the way, uh, I will mention that, uh, you have to correct me if I'm wrong because I'm learning all this too, but uh, it's something like 20 some currencies. How many, how many currencies are there that you're, that you're accepting now? Uh, let's see, well, right now we've got uh, eight right now, eight. but we're gonna have, we're gonna be about 25 in the next uh, week or two. 25 uh, currencies in the next week or two. So it doesn't matter where you are, if it's Russian ruples or Mexican pesos, you're gonna you're gonna cover the globe, mm -hmm. and we're gonna exactly. basically convert yeah, we're all. We're actually looking for partners. We're looking for other established businesses around the world that would like to participate in this with us, and um, we got a partner in group. And uh, I think it's something that a lot of people would be interested in, mm -hmm. and hopefully we can be in 50 or 100 countries within a month or two. That's so the, ba the main benefits of TradeHill.com over the existing options are the um, so many different currencies and also so many different ways to get your money in like instantly today. You can do um, a bank wire transfer uh, if you're in the U.S., a domestic wire transfer like today and get it in there immediately. Like by the time this show's over, your money can be in there and credited and uh, you're buying Bitcoins like now in all these different currencies no matter where you are on the globe. And uh, the fees are less than, than competitors. Um, what else? Oh, you were telling me, can I, can I disclose what you were telling me about what you can do with your uh, Bitcoins after you? Yeah, actually, tell you what, let me, I'll just go uh, give you a rundown real quick on some features and then okay. we'll finish up with that one. That sounds good. Um, I think I know which one you're talking about. So, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like Bruce said, uh, you can deposit with uh, domestic or international wire transfers. 
Uh, we accept Walla, which I like Walla. I mean, it's it's a little slow sometimes. I think that's going to speed up though. Yeah, I hope but so. you can't beat the price. I mean, twenty-five cents. Cents. Yeah. I mean, banks, yeah. banks are really ripping us off and charging anywhere between ten and thirty dollars. By uh, the way, for money. By the way, I want to tell um, you. I don't, I don't interrupt yeah. you, but I want to tell you this: the um, <clears throat> I, the Dwala people called me when I created my account the first day. I, they're probably too busy to call people now, but they welcomed me to it. And one of the things that they told me was <clears throat> very. RSN, as we say, real soon now, they're going to have this new uh, serv uh, technology called FI Sync. And as soon oh, yeah. as they get the banks all tied in with the, the S FI Sync, which is supposed to be like real soon, then it will work the same exact way it does now, 25 cents, but it'll be instantaneous. No more bank wiring. So now the problem, if you have money in Dwala, great, it's instantaneous. But if you don't, it's going to take you uh, several days to get it through. But with this instantaneous thing, wow, yeah, instant, that's going to be yeah. slick. Exactly, that's going to be huge. So um, we're offering a few other things like Liberty Reserve, um, and then that's for deposits. For withdrawals, we have a lot more options. Uh, I like to play video games. I know a lot of people use, use Bitcoins to play video games. So we're offering the option to withdraw the game cards. Uh, you play Warcraft, EverQuest, uh, any of those mm -hmm. games, Aeon, Biff, whatever, you can withdraw to that. Um, also, uh, there's the Ultimate Game Card, which has like a thousand games on it. You can withdraw that as well. Um, oh. I don't play Farmville, but I know quite a few people who do. If you want to cash out the Farmville account, well, <laughs> go Bitcoin to Farmville. It's a fine way. <laughs> um, we're also uh, accepting donations. Um, not to us, of course, we're definitely for profit, but I think the EFF is going to be huge because. Bitcoin is not going to just be accepted. There's going to be people opposed to it for a variety of reasons. Um, I think the EFF is going to be huge in the, in the fight for Bitcoin. I think there's a lot of people that have already donated to the EFF with Bitcoin. Also, we're going to see a lot of people that are suddenly very rich, and they're not going to have a problem cashing out 10 or 20 or 100 Bitcoins. Mm -hmm. probably remember. You probably don't remember. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm sure <laughs> I have... This is, a, I'm just a journalist. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, you can, you can send Bitcoins to us, sell them on the exchange, and then hit transfer the EFF, and then we transfer those dollars to the EFF, or the Red Cross. Uh, those are the two that we're currently offering. It's kind of an experiment. Um, I think it's going to work well. I've seen, uh, I was involved with the Bitcoin community when the uh, disaster in uh, Japan hit, was it, uh, three months ago. Oh, yeah. And, uh, there was a lot of people instantly that just said, hey, like, how do we get money to Japan? How do we get money right. to Japan? So we want to be there. We want to be a legitimate way to do that. Um, obviously, with Bitcoin, like we talked about earlier, with the transparency, you can be sure that your money is going to the Red Cross yeah. or to the EFF. You know, you can see us change the money over, and you can see your block allocated and everything. So you don't have to worry that we're going to just say we're donating yeah. and then it. You know, the, there's uh, a, I don't know if you heard this, but um, the EFF recently stopped accepting donations via Bitcoin. They say they're going to do a, um, a, an evaluation. And I think, uh, you know, they're attorneys and they're, they're doing their due diligence. I think they're doing the right thing to really analyze it through and through, which actually is good for all of us that they do that before they, you know, so they, they've stopped, they've at least temporarily uh, suspended donations via Bitcoin. So uh, that's all the more reason why if you, if, if Trade Hill can accept. That's all that matters. Um, so that's a good way because the EFF is so important what they're doing. Uh, their work is so important. Uh, but that, that's great because we can still donate via Bitcoin. You know, if we go to Trade Hill, yeah and donate that way, and it's good. we know it's going to get there, even if they don't accept Bitcoin directly. Exactly. They're taking our money one way or another. Yeah, that's right. They're going to get it. They don't have a choice. Though. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's and great. Um, yeah, and um, also I, iTunes gift cards. So uh, yeah. if you want to buy $100 yeah. on iTunes, we can just instantly email it to you. Yeah. Um, now, the big one that's I think has a lot of people excited is uh, we have the option to purchase on Amazon.com through us. So it's actually incredibly simple. Um, this is also an experiment. If it works well, which I think it will, we'll expand it. 
Um, basically, go to Amazon.com, you have to have an account, and then you make a wish list, which is pretty simple. You find some products you like, click add to wish list, and then once you have the wish list, you need to make it public. So there's a button for public. public, and then there's a link to your wish list. So you copy that, you go back to our site, you go to withdraw bitcoins, Amazon uh, cash out, I believe, Amazon purchase, I believe it's called, and then you paste that into the block at the bottom, you put your address, and then you put the amount of bitcoins that it's lost, and then you hit the button, and then within four hours, your order is processed, and whatever you bought is on the, is going for. How many hours? You were on the you broke up just a little, within how many hours? 24. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. So basically, it's Amazon accepts Bitcoins now, <laughs> through Trade Hill. Uh, if they want or not, it's, basically, it's like, yeah. They, they don't have a choice. Want, if they want it or not. That's great. We, can, we, can you do that for every website on the internet? <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on it, we'll see what we can do. We'll see what we can. Like iTunes? And when I say 24 hours on a lot of these things, that's basically to make sure we have time. Um, yeah. Right now, a lot of it's being done manually, just to make sure it's secure, it's safe, and also there's a lot of coding involved in making it automatic. Right. Um, so right now, a lot of that's being done manually. Yeah. Uh, the good thing is, we're sitting there waiting, and you see an Amazon.com work come in, I'll hop on it, I'll, start, I'll transfer all the information, and there mm -hmm. you go. So it, it could be out in 20 minutes. Cool. That's great. And you're, are you planning to add others, other uh, shopping sites to that list? Definitely, definitely. Uh, Baiting eBay. I'm a little scared of eBay because uh, once or twice I saw somebody from eBay, I wasn't exactly what I said, and I don't want to be of that. But definitely a, a site like UK, Tiger Track, uh, I'm looking to start with the biggest and easiest to handle. Yeah. yeah, those sites for uh, computer parts should really be popular for all the miners. Yeah. This way they can take the Bitcoin that they're earning through mining and buy a better mining Buy better gear. mining gear. Yeah, exactly. All those, uh, like, definitely yeah, the I computers and electronics. I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm not a fan of eBay. <laughs> and especially not PayPal. But <laughs> it would be ironic if they benefit from this. But uh, Yeah, yeah, that's definitely true. But, uh, I think they had intentions in the beginning, and it just uh, um, yeah, it just went on its own and way back when turned into something we don't like. Exactly, Frankenstein. <laughs> the uh, what was I going to ask you? Oh, I forgot. <laughs> well, um, I know that we said it's instant, like uh, sort of like trading. I did see an option when I did briefly go in there where you can like instantly cash out or instantly like buy Bitcoin. Oh yeah, how does that work? That's a new like, feature, right? Yeah, that's a good feature, and that's really big. You think it's going to be you. Um, instant buy, and, instant sell, right? Exactly. What it's, what it's really good for is the people that don't want to get involved in a bid or an ask, <coughs> or don't want to bid and ask is. They simply say, hey, I want to okay. buy 20 bitcoins. How much is it going to cost? And they hit the button, and they get a quote. They like it, they accept, and then trade is done. 20 bitcoins in their account, which they can transfer out. Um, Currently, it only works. It, you need to put the amount of bitcoins you want, and it tells you the dollar value. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have it very soon, so you can say, "I have a thousand dollars. How many bitcoins can I buy?" Who and was it that suggested bitcoins? that improvement? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you gotta give me credit. You yeah, know. know. Come on. Okay, you go know, ahead. Go ahead. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. You made me you're feel good. You made me. Look at it and say, hey. This you know, needs like, changed. Yeah. <laughs> you know, your, your business mindset, you know, you, you said it instantly. You've been yeah. on the site for maybe 30 seconds. <laughs> that so, That's um, because everybody all day long, they say, I want to buy $1,000 worth. They don't think 1,000 bitcoins worth. They think $1,000 worth. Because we always were trained to think in dollars. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I've been living in Chile for three years and I still think in dollars for the yeah. most part. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, cool. And it's really dangerous when you think in dollars with Bitcoins because um, it changes the path. You know? I know. So you can't price anything with Bitcoins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know BitBills was like, uh, you know, something like uh, 30 bit cents for, you know, a uh, premium for the card, for a one Bitcoin card. And that was.
And that's something that's really kind of a weird thing about uh, Bitcoin is they everybody every merchant has to constantly be lowering their prices. Right. You know, because <laughs> the value keeps going up, they've got to quickly lower their prices. Especially oh. today. <laughs> Somehow I think that there's going to have to be, somebody's got to create an API where it's tied to the, to the value of Bitcoin so that the price is just fluid. <laughs> like it's fluid at that yeah. moment. Well, some, some people have made some scripts and whatnot. So you can, so you can uh, put your price in dollar mm -hmm. and then um, there you go. it'll automatically display in Bitcoin based on, I believe, the last uh, transaction on the mm -hmm. I just remembered, speaking of that, that's what uh, my I, an important question I've been meaning to ask and I wanted to save it for the show. And that is because uh, we, we start talking and we can't we can't shut up yeah. and we're like oh, we gotta we gotta tape this and make a show. Um, but this is the question I haven't asked you. What do you think? What do you, what do you all think is going to happen to the price the Bitcoin price with a new market opening up that has so many more features than Mt. Gox? It's it's you know it's I, you think every if everybody floods over to this new one, there's going to be an equilibrium you know a balancing act of people moving. What do you think is going to happen to the price of Bitcoin over the next 48 hours a week because of this? I think regardless of what happens, the price of Bitcoin is going to go up. <laughs> but I think, yeah. I think we're going to help it go up and we're going to increase the speed that it goes up because transactions can happen faster. You can put your money in quicker and pull it out quicker. So yeah. if you look at a lot of the big press hits that Bitcoin has got, there's been a lag between. Um, if you you look at the Google searches that are done for Bitcoin, every time the volume of searches goes up, it lags a little bit behind before the value. Because a lot of people, uh, they're taking three days or five days or a week to buy their Bitcoin. Part of that is just the knowledge diffusion. You know, they hear about it and they go, ah, I don't know if this will really work, I don't want to lose my money. And then they go, man, if I would have bought it last week, I would have dumped my money. Yeah. And then they say, oh, I'm going to put my money in. And then they go, oh, man, now I got to open a small account. I got to verify. Wait, now wait, I'm gonna send that money in, they and then all of a sudden the price tripled, and yeah. So uh, I believe the more exchanges and the faster the exchanges are, the quicker the price is gonna go up. Yeah. Anyway, I had somebody sell a whole bunch uh, on Monday for ten dollars, and then now buying them back for like almost thirty. I mean, it just happens over and over, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's liquidity. Liquidity is gonna make it more uh, a better utility. So uh, that's always good for it. I think it's, yeah, well, I think you're right. With the uh, trade hill opening up, how do you think this is going to affect our ability to measure the price of Bitcoin? Are we going to have to sort of do check two of, places or yeah, three have places? Check multiple exchanges and then sort of extrapolate that together into one single price? How is that going to affect? Because yeah. at Mount Gox, it might be $30 and at trade hill, it might be $40. Well, we've exactly. already solved that problem, by the way, Jared. I haven't told you this. But <laughs> our meetup we have here, we hosted right here at Only One TV every Saturday. We have a hack, well, we actually have three. We have a hackathon, a promotathon, and then a legal think tank, all about Bitcoin. But um, the hackathon got, uh, you know, Andrew Schaaf actually is uh, the head, kind of like the de facto team lead of the He's hackathon. A beast, by the way. He's what? He's a beast. He's, He's a beast. Yeah, <laughs> he is. Yeah. So he was here. Actually, you, you talked to him uh, uh, when we were talking originally. So uh, he's been in on this, uh, this uh, secret uh, of Trade Hill launch. And we were talking about it. And he's come up with an idea of taking you know, like the top several exchange sites and then taking the, the value and then weighting it by the volume. So the trade site value weighted by the volume and then coming up with an average. You know, like, so a, a whole other thing that he's uh, talking about like just a just a simple little website, super super simple that takes that information and compiles it. Yeah, but then that also like plays very well into the whole concept of Bitcoin because Bitcoin derives its value like any fiat currency from our trust in it. Mm -hmm. So it would take the Bitcoin community to sort of trust, you know, that yeah. method of doing it, sort of like regulation. That's like right. What uh, Jared was talking about. So the more they trust that trade that exchange site, the more weighted that price will be as far as the, what the real value is. It's an interesting concept. It'll be interesting, oh, though, to see what happens. Sounds great. And then you've got, um, you know, like with these, you, you have so many different currencies. You know, if you have what X number of eight currencies or whatever right now, and you're going to have many, many more, um, I wonder if people are going <laughs> to use it like Forex. Like they're going to have, like they see that the Chilean, whatever it is, Chilean peso or what is it? Yeah, it's really so. Right. I mean, like if it's like undervalued for Bitcoin, you know what I mean? They're going to buy them in dollars and or buy with dollars and yeah. then sell them back yeah. and in and out and like to 
to keep the equilibrium among the, all the currencies? Yeah, I mean, when you start talking about Forex, there's a lot of different regulation you get to. And I mean, we want to be really clear that we're not a Forex company. Mm -hmm. You know, but yeah, you have a good point. You could, you could, there's going to be a lot of arbitrage between, between the different currencies. Mm -hmm. And I think there's going to be a lot of money to be made there. I think the situation, and I could be wrong on this, but I think the situation is kind of going to take care of itself. Because anytime there's a potential for a lot of profit, People with a lot of money are going to come in, mm -hmm. and they're going to lock in these prices, and they're going to take advantage of that little difference. And then the more people that are selling on both of them, uh, or all three of them, or all eight of them, or however many currencies we're talking about, closer the value will be. Yeah. So I think I think people are going to realize how much money can be made there. And uh, we've already talked with some. Uh, they want me to. They want to remain anonymous now. But when you hear about them, if you're if you're into the uh, finance and quant and all that stuff, you're gonna uh, you say, ah, oh, yeah, this is a pretty serious uh, company you're working with. But Anonym um, <laughs> anonymous, they're, they're gonna handle that. So there's gonna be some people that are a lot smarter than us, and we're pretty smart guys, Bruce. Uh, <laughs> so they're gonna um, definitely take care of that. But there's gonna be a lot of money to be made in it. What about automated trading, like robots and things? I know that, like Mt. Gox, before they had a fee, like originally they had no fee, and there was a lot of robot automated trading. Um, so there's kind of two questions. One, I mean, do you think there, that, like how much of that do you think is going to exist? Because obviously Tradehill is going to charge a fee, although it'll be less than the other exchange sites. And also, what is the fee, by the way? What is, what is the fee that tra Tradehill is going to charge? We got it at 0.6% um, on the trades, but we can have a lot of uh, discounts and things like that. Mm -hmm. Also, I'm pretty sure we're going to see a, an exchange war before too long, mm -hmm. and those fees are going to drop quick. Mm -hmm. um, realistically, on Bitcoin, 0.6 is nothing. Yeah. Um, you know, how are you going to complain about 0.6 when it's gone up, you know, 2,000% in the last two months? <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> right. you know, Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then when you compare it to things like PayPal, it's it's great. Mm -hmm. You know, what's point six compared to three percent or whatever PayPal charges, and depending on how you move. Right, right. Um, but on the currency exchange world, um, in in high volume, point six is really high. Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to see it drop a lot. Um, but by that time, the volume will be so high, exchanges will still be profitable, and people will tend to continue. And then we'll be partying uh, on your yacht. <laughs> <laughs> your yacht, I mean, <laughs> your yachts. Well, well, a communal yacht. It'll be the communal Bitcoin community yacht. Mm -hmm. It'll be a free open source yacht. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, I have a two part question myself. Sure. Uh, tell us the fastest and easiest way to get U.S. dollars to Bitcoins. And also keep in mind the second part is how do you navigate through? Is it the same route that you would take if you have euros or uh, ruples or whatever? Well, it, it definitely depends on the on the currency. Like for example, here in Chile, I can go online and I can do a transfer to any bank free out of my personal account instantly. Um, in that respect, the United States is really far behind. Um, Peru, I can do the same thing. A lot of the world, you can do online instant free transfers to any bank in the country. So mm -hmm. for South America, that's going to be the case. Um, it's great. In Chile, um, you know, you could you could fund it. You could have funded your account already, just like that. Uh, the euro, it's going to be really similar uh, because within the EU, you can transfer money a lot easier. Um, unfortunately, dollar is the one that's the real pain, um, which is. You know, one of the biggest reasons that Bitcoin is so popular. Um, I think the easiest way is to just do a wire, um, yeah. because most people that are buying Bitcoin are not buying ten dollars, fifteen dollars worth, and they're not making deposits for ten and fifteen. Yeah. If you're going to deposit two thousand dollars or five thousand dollars or even even five hundred, then uh, just do the wire transfer. If you're with ING Direct, which uh, I'm definitely not paid by them, but I would highly recommend them. I'm really happy with their services. I think they're a great bank. They provide free incoming and outgoing wire transfers. Oh, that's um, good. That's so great I would highly recommend, and actually there's a way to get a referral code. You know what, I should be using a referral code. Yeah, you think. should. Get but it to I me. I recommend we'll ING. Um, They'll be a sponsor <laughs> soon. And I think, I think Bitcoin is going to cause them to grow. Not like Walla, not like Bitcoin's uh, Walla grow. But uh, also with HSBC, 
Um, we have an HSBC, HSBC account we use for international transfers. So, you have an HSBC or an ING direct account, it's going to be fast. Mm -hmm. um, we would like to accept PayPal just because of the simplicity and the speed and, the, and how many people have PayPal. Right. But uh, one, we don't really like PayPal, and two, they have been shutting down people's accounts yeah. paid with Bitcoin. Exactly. They, they don't fall under banking regulations. They don't fall under banking regulations. They, they won that, and I mean, they've, they've closed my account and seized all my money twice. They're just like, if you Google PayPal, you'll see how many sites are saying PayPal is evil, PayPal is scam, and all that. So you could, I would say, you know, if you want to accept PayPal, make sure that you allow six months for it to clear because they can reverse the transactions within six months. You know, it's just ridiculous. It's not cash. You, you can't buy cash with a credit card anyway, anywhere else. I mean, unless you go, what I say is you can buy Bitcoin with a credit card, just go to the bank and it's called a cash advance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now you have cash. You know, by the yeah. way, I wanted to say this about, about the cost of wire transfers. I mean, with, uh, you know, in the old days, yesterday and the day before. And it would cost like 40 bucks here and 38.50 on their end. It, it, it's like 75, 80 bucks, but it was absolutely worth it. And we did the math because like, if you put it in the Douala, it was taking an average of about six calendar days which is uh, not good when, <laughs> when the thing is doubling so fast. Yeah. We did the math and figured out that over the, uh, you know, over the, even in just the last few weeks, the way it has grown, that it only took $55 for it to be cost justified to pay $80 in wire transfer fees at the way it's growing. So forget the cost of the wire transfer, just get your money there as fast as possible. As well as great if you already have money in there, but who does? You know, so I think that what I w and that's another kind of interesting little sidebar. We're saying, if I were in the boardroom of Dwala right now, I'd be saying this is a real love-hate relationship here. First of all, there are probably more transactions going to buy Bitcoin than all the other Dwala transactions combined, which is kind of weird because Bitcoin is going to be like the competitor that might. Well, who knows? Who well, knows? It's different. It's different. It is a different thing. So there's that. And then the other thing is that uh, you know all of those people who bought Bitcoin through Dwala will buy them exactly once <laughs> until they figure out that it takes six days um, or until they get that FI sync. On the other hand, when they get the FI sync thing, this could be a godsend for everybody in Bitcoin because we can, with, with, and no matter where you bank, you can get it there you know, instantly for 25 cents. Use day yes. trading, like realistically. Yes, day trading, yeah. Oh, I, w I don't recommend that, though. If you're gonna do that, go to Vegas. I always say, you know, get free drinks and dancing girls if you're gonna do that. I, one of my friends is a Microsoft millionaire, one of the original Microsoft millionaires, but he got hooked on the day trading, and it's like a drug. It's just absolutely gambling, so I don't recommend it. But, uh, but yeah, buying Bitcoins instantly, that's really gonna help. Uh, Exactly, and I think I think what Duala does, uh, I think that's awesome. I think that's great. I think that uh, the U.S. banking system needs it. I think yeah. it's to me it's embarrassing. Uh, you know, when I tell people in Chile and they say, "Oh, well, just watch, log into your U.S. account and send some money to your country." Sorry, I, I can't do that. Right. They say, you know, and the, and I look at I look at Chile. I love Chile, and it's not a third world country. I and mean, Chile Chile's doing good, you know, mm -hmm. but. The U.S. should be ahead of Chile in banking. You know what I mean? Yeah. Something's wrong here. I don't. I don't know if, uh, what the reason is. I don't know if they don't want it to go faster. It's just greed. It's uh, greed, it's yeah. Greed, and you know, they sort of everybody's in cahoots together, so mm -hmm. there's always right mm -hmm. right definitely ahead. Of greed. Monopolies, so greed, greed, greed. Yeah. It's not that we need some technology. No. It's, <laughs> it's just greed. It's, it's not <laughs> a financial thing. It's also a political. Yeah. Thing. And that's yeah. where the political, the financial, corporatology, controlling government, and all, yeah, yeah. you know that. Corporate I mean, America. yeah, thank God for the internet in so many levels. So many levels. Thank God for the internet for educating. Every twenty-year-old knows more than than you know than the fifty and sixty-year-olds old will ever know about how this stuff really works just from Google video. You know, just they learn about this stuff. And I, you could, I, I mean, you're talking to a fifteen-year-old, and they're like, you know, we went to. <laughs> this is like several months ago, maybe four or five months ago, and we went to, of all places, we went to Outback, and I was there early, and I was the only one there. And I heard these two bus boys, like junior high kids.
money. That's why the value of the money is going down. And people are actually buying like blocks of gold. And these are two busboys, you know, it's like really reaching a tipping point in our culture that, that everybody, kids are educating their parents. And I, I don't know how many times this week I've heard people around me and, you know, uh, calling their parents saying, listen, mom and dad, you've got to trust me. Just trust me on this. Buy Bitcoin. No, it's not a stock. You know, and uh, it's kind of crazy, but, I'm but there right now. you're there. I mean, mm -hmm. so many people, and they're, 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 you know, it's amazing, but they're convincing their parents, and, you know, whatever. Now that it's in Forbes, you know, Smart Money did an article this morning, and yeah, it was a great article, by the yeah. way. CBS yeah. News had a video yeah. blog uh, recently, I just, I just discovered. And, but there's so many, so many things happening so fast, it's really, really hitting a mainstream media, you know, yeah. frenzy. Well, so. with Trading Hill now, it's going to lower sort of the entry uh, to get into the actual exactly. exchanging Bitcoin for U.S. dollars or whatever currency it is. So that alone in itself is going to allow, I'm sure there's been a demand, and that demand couldn't be fulfilled because of the barriers involved. And so hopefully that will knock down some barriers and the value will increase because of that. Exactly. exactly. I, we've, I, we've run out of time, and I, I, we have a, still have 100 million questions. I want to say that you know, thank you, Jared, so much for for joining us. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. we're just gonna continue this for another hour in Spanish. For El Show the Bitcoin, and um, we have decided uh, we the other day that we the Bitcoin show is gonna become a, is going to be starting today a daily show every day Monday through Friday. So uh, thank you, Jared, and yes, uh, thank you, thank you guys, and we'll, we'll yeah, we will. You know, like one thing, Bruce. Um, mm -hmm. We didn't mention the referral program. I just realized. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, um, which, you know, I think a lot of people are going to come to Trade Hill because of this. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, you've got, you've got a referral code, right? Yeah, what's our referral code? You've got it there. TH dash. TH dash R141. TH dash R141. Got it. Okay, so type that in. When you go to tradehill.com, type in the referral code TH dash R. What is it? R141. And you'll get 5% off for life. So there you go. There's your gift uh, exactly. from Trade Hill. And everyone, everyone that opens the account has a referral code. So feel free to hand it out. Tell people about Trade, trade Hill. Spread the word. And then you can earn a part of the commission generated from the people you recruit. So it's like the ultimate, ultimate multi-level marketing system. And Uncle Bernie Madoff is going to be so happy that we, we only have to sign up three more people and we get a toaster oven. But no, no, seriously, <laughs> you're gonna love it because you get you refer your friends, which you're gonna do anyway, right. and then you're gonna get paid. It's what's it's brilliant. It's yes. really brilliant. Great so. design. Does, um, does that actually like go into like deeper levels? Like if I refer somebody and they refer somebody, do I get a residual? How many amount? levels deep does that go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, we've actually been talking about that. We're we're probably gonna implement that. Um, we we see we see both sides of it. I mean, we like the idea, but on the other hand, it, it kind of has almost a Ponzi look to it, which yeah. we definitely want to avoid. But it's it's legit. Well, you know what yeah. you're getting out of it when you do it. So it's yeah. it's definitely not a Ponzi scheme. We're definitely going to research it some more and uh, see about implementing that. But uh, we like the idea. And um, okay. well, one level well. one level deep is still a quantum leap. So we got to go. We're out of time. Great. All right. Thank we'll see you all tomorrow. Great job right. over there at 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Eastern. You. See you live tomorrow. Yes. Thanks for joining Thanks us. Thanks for joining us. Thank Peace. You.